In this problem, we're told a skier moves down a 27 degree slope at a constant speed. What can you say about the coefficient of friction mu sub k? Assume the speed is low enough that air resistance can be ignored. So let's go ahead and draw what's going on here. So we're going to have this slope so with our skier on it. And so we know the angle, right, the degree of our slope is 27 degrees. And so we know they're going to be traveling at a constant speed. And so let's go ahead and draw our skier. So this is our skier. And so let's go ahead and label the forces acting on our skier. So what do we know? So we know anything is going to have mg going straight down, right? The weight force is just going to go straight down. But what we want to do here is notice how, or what you want to do is treat this direction as the x axis, and then perpendicular to that is going to be your y axis. It's going to make it easier to solve. So think about it in that way. And so what we're going to want to do is find the vertical component and horizontal component. So if you think about this as a triangle, right? So this is going to be our vertical component of our weight force. And then at this angle, right, this is going to be our horizontal component. And so notice this line is going to be at like the same angle as this line. And so that's why you want to think about this as the X and Y. And this is going to be our X horizontal force, right? Our weight force in the horizontal direction. And this is going to be your weight force in the vertical direction. And so let's say well, the other forces though. So we know it's going to have the normal force acting up, right, with respect to, uh, this angle, right? So think about it like it doesn't go straight up. It goes based off what you're touching, right? Anything, if you're touching something that has a normal force acting against you. So we have this normal force at this angle like this. And then we also have the force of friction going in this direction, right? So the force of friction, I like to think about it as a force that goes in the opposite direction because it slows you down. And so this right here is going to be our drawing. And so notice what they're asking us for is mu sub k, so just keep that in mind when we're solving this. So what we want to do now is label the vertical and horizontal components of our weight force. So the way you want to think about this is, a, is like a triangle. And so if this is our triangle, and this is the angle, right? So this is our angle. And so what you need to know about this angle theta is it's the same as this angle right here of your incline. So this angle is 27 degrees. So if we redraw the triangle, this is 27 degrees. And so mg is this line right here. And this is the hypotenuse of our triangle. So this is mg. And so what we're trying to do is find this part y and this part x. And so essentially, it's going to be this part and this part. And so what we're trying to do is find these two parts. And so we know the sine of an angle, in this case 27 degrees, is equal to the opposite y over mg. And so if we want to solve for it, mg, so mg times the sine of 27 is going to be this side right here, right? So it lines up. So this side is mg times the sine of 27. And then we know the cosine of our angle, 27 degrees, is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So x over mg. Multiply both sides by mg. So our y in this case, y component of our weight force, is mg times the cosine of 27. So that's going to be that. I'm going to redraw the free body diagram just so it's easier to understand. So we know we have the force of friction going this direction right the x going the opposite way we know we have our normal force going up and then we know in the x direction we have mg times the sine of 27 right and it's pushing us this way our weight force so mg times the sine of 27 and so keep in mind it's positive right if we think about it like x and y this direction is positive negative negative positive so mg times the cosine of 27 which is our vertical component of our weight force right it's going to be going down, right? It goes down on our x and y axis. So mg times the cosine of 27. So whenever you solve these problems, you want to take the sum of the forces in each direction. So let's start with the sum of the forces in the x direction. So sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be equal to ma. But keep in mind a is 0 because we're traveling at a constant speed. So really, it's just equal to 0. So, so we're going to set equal to the sum of the forces in the x direction. So what are the sum of the forces in our x direction? So we know that uh, you want to label it based on the direction it's traveling. So we want to add these forces. So if it's going to the right, it's positive. If it's left, it's negative. So the force of friction is going to be negative because it's going to the left. Plus, and then this one's going to the right, so it's positive. So mg times the sine of 27. So the force of friction is equal to mg times the sine of 27. Right, so all I did was add this to the other side. So this is going to be that. And so now we want to do the y direction. And so 
this is going to be equal to zero because our acceleration is again zero in the y direction because we're not moving in it. So it equals zero. So what are the forces in the y direction? Well, positively, we have F sub n. And then mg times the cosine of 27 is going down. So it's negative. And so we can do Fn if we add this to the other side, mg times the cosine of 27. And so now we've got Fn in the force of friction. And so the, there's a formula that we're going to want to use to solve this. The force of friction, force of friction is equal to mu sub k, right, this variable, times F sub n. And so notice how we solve for S, uh, F sub n, and we solve for the force of friction, right? Force of friction, mg times the sine of 27, and then... F sub n is mg times the cosine of 27, and we're solving for mu sub k, which we're going to be able to do. So the force of friction is mg times the sine of 27, which equals mu sub k times F sub n, mg times the cosine of 27. And so notice uh, mg's can cancel, so these are canceling. And then what we're going to want to do is divide both sides right by cosine of 27, to get mu sub k by itself. And so what you should notice about this is you could just solve this, right? But sine over cosine is tangent. So really mu sub k is equal to the tangent of 27. So this right here is going to be uh, your answer, right? So if you take the tangent of 27, uh, you're going to get that mu sub k. Uh, let me plug it in the calculator. So tangent of 27, if you go ahead and do that, mu sub k is going to be equal to 0 0.5095. So this right here is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this useful.